So in my last video reviewing the Cobalt XDR 4 amp hour battery, I did a comparison in physical size between the new Cobalt 4 amp hour battery and the Bosch 4 amp hour battery. The Bosch battery is much smaller and lighter than the Cobalt, even though they are the same capacity. Okay, so the Bosch have five cells instead of six cells like the Cobalt, but it's still a lot smaller in all dimensions. So I just assumed the Bosch battery use 18650 cells. And I have a comment from Preston and he says, How's the Bosch battery so small using 18650s and ready for 4 amp hour without being in parallel? I won't be buying their stuff, but they must lie since there aren't any 18650s that do 4000 mAh. Perhaps they lie just a little bit and use 3.5 amp hour sound yos, but then their output would be limited to 10 amp and that would suck. Well, Preston, guess what? We're gonna find out today whether or not Bosch is lying. I'm going to tear it down and show you exactly what's inside this battery because I'm also dying to know this. Before I tear this down, I'm gonna do a quick search on the world's biggest flea market to see if we can find any. Well, nothing. There are no 18650 batteries that have 4 amp hour capacity right now, let alone one with high discharge rate. Well, there are some ultra fire 18650s that claim to have 4 amp hour. In fact, some even claim to have over 9 amp hour. But we all know it's just an ultra lie. So here it is. This is the inside of the Boss 4 amp hour battery. There are a total of 8 screws or 4 screws on each side. And then uh, you just have to pull it apart. The top part just comes up and then we got the circuit board on the top here and I already removed the circuit board. There are no screws on the circuit board. Uh, there are a couple of latches which you have to pry out but uh, it will just come up just like that. There is one huge difference between this Boss battery and many other power tool batteries that I removed before that this one here use copper strip you can see how skinny that is it's very thin it's white but it's very thin as a comparison this one is the boss copper strip this one is the nickel strip from a cobalt battery pack let's try the boss copper strip first 0.1 millimeter okay let's try the nickel strip Put three millimeter. So this nickel strip is three times thicker than the Boss copper strip. And because copper is a much better conductor than nickel, you can get away by using much less material compared to nickel. This also makes sense when you want to make a battery pack that is compact enough and don't put too too much on the sides. And for me, it also makes sense because it will make my job a lot easier if I want to remove this copper strip. So I just use my hand here, I'm trying to tear it off. See, it's already torn off on this side, so I'm just going to pull on the other side. And it would just come out just like that. No pliers, no blood, no sweat. That's it, it will come out just like that. It's very easy. And I already removed the BMS which sits on the top here. There are no screw, you just have to pry it out. So here is how far I've gone. And I've removed some copper strips on both sides. And I've got these two cells that are free. So I should be able to pull it out. Let's try this cell first. quite tight there go it's very tight in here Let's see what we got wow what on earth INR 21700 40T Samsung wow this is exactly the same cell from the Cobalt XDR 4 amp hour battery pack 
So I've been wrong all this time because the battery pack is so small. I assume that it has 18650 cells, but apparently this is not. I am so sorry, folks. Because last video I told you that this battery has 18650 cells. It does not. It has 21700 cells. Here's a side by side comparison between 18650, it's a green cell here, and these 21700 cells. You can see the huge difference in size. So, the lesson I learned here is don't judge the battery by its cover. Now, let's try and remove the next cell. This one here, let's see if we can push it out. Wow, it's very heavy, extremely heavy. But it seems like it comes out a little bit. On the top here, we got a very thin circuit board. And it goes down underneath the plastic and sandwiched between the battery cell itself and the plastic. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do any damage. I push it out like this. The first cell doesn't have anything, but the second and the rest of the cells, they do have this thing, a sandwich inside there. All right, I'm just gonna push it out anyway. Wow, it's very heavy. I can't even push it out. Oh. Well, good news, it's coming out, but it's extremely tight because it's got this thing, sandwich in there. Coming out. Whew. I know, 21740T. Well, this thing here, very weird. I've never seen anything like this before. It is not connected to the battery. So it's just sandwiched between the plastic and the cells. So here's the inside plastic casing. And this thing goes through this slot here. Go to the inside. So you push the battery in. Okay. You go like this. And flat. It will be sandwiched between the plastic and the case of the cell. Which is also a negative terminal of the cell. Well, I think I just figured that out. This flat wire here is the balance cable. It's not physically soldered onto the battery, but it is connected to battery. When you push the battery in there, right? It's very tight in there. So that's, that wire right there is pressed down, right? Like that. And then it's connected to the case of the cell because the cell is naked so the outer shell of the cell is also the negative terminal of this battery right so that is connected to the negative terminal of the battery so in the case of this cell here the case of this cell which is a negative terminal is also connected to this series connection right here right so if you want to balance charge this battery, usually what you have to do is to solder to every series connection of the batteries, right? And then the other two wires go to the terminals of the battery. So for example, this is a cobalt battery and these are the balance wire. You can see the wire is connected to the series connection, to every series connection of the battery. It has six cells, so the balance cable should have seven connections, right? So one, two, three, four, five. And then the, the last two connections are the main terminal of the battery, which is this here and this here. And you can do the same thing here for this. But in this case, you don't have to solder out here because it's connected right in here. So here, the connection here is exactly the same as the connection here. So you don't have to solder a wire out to here and because this battery has five cells so the balance cable should have six connections just like this one here 
So the first and the last cables are going to the main terminals of the battery. The four middle cables, they are going to every single series connection of the battery. So it goes here, 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 which I already uh, removed. And then last one is here. So the first one go to the main positive terminal of the battery, which is here, right? And then the subsequent wires will go to here, which is here, right? Here, which is here, here, which is this one. And then the last one is here, which is this one. This is extremely smart and brilliant because you don't have to solder any extra wire on the side and that makes it thicker. And you also save time soldering the wires together, right? All you gotta do is just to push the battery in, which I'm sure they use machine to push in, and you're done. No more soldering required. I have teared down many power tool batteries and I have never seen anything like this before. So clearly Boss is advanced years ahead compared to other competitors. As a comparison, this is a DeWalt 1.5 amp hour battery pack and it uses 18650 cells, whereas the Boss uses 21700 cells and, and you can see they are almost about the same size. That's amazing. But this one here is three times the capacity compared to this. Well, almost three times the capacity. And also, not only does this have more capacity, this can only give you more discharge rate. For this one, the maximum continuous discharge rate is 35 amps, whereas this, 20 amps. And if you really push this, you can get it up to 45 amp continuous discharge. That's about twice the current compared to this one, even though the cell is just a little bit bigger. That's amazing. So the future power tool battery is going to be 21700 cells, 18650, not too much. I think this is going to be phased out. And until we can develop and perfect our graphene solid state technology, this is going to be the new standard for power tool batteries. And that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.